So let's take a peek at the secret hidden garden and what changes are coming in the past week. Oh, I hear a noise. Something big in the tree. I heard it. Wait a minute. Well, the tree is covered in birds. Could be a bird. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. And you know what I'm doing? I am sitting in my secret hidden garden. See, and I'll show you the couple little things he's done. Not much yet, but look at this. I'm having coffee. And you're going, what is she sitting on? There's a chair there. I'll get up in a minute. I'm enjoying the semi-quiet. And I'm just looking out at the lightly clouded sky and thinking what I'm going to do today. I've been tearing apart my kitchen. I want to try to go on live more in there with the hummingbirds. Maybe even on times I'm just making dinner. And if I'm going to do nonsense, I'll just go on for members only. Oh, that's not saying I'm doing nonsense for members, thinking, what the heck is she doing? <laughs> so, I don't know. Look at that. That's a honeysuckle tree or bush that Gary planted a long time ago with the orange flowers. That brings in a lot of birds. He planted that there. Then we've got the chain link there. He's got plans. He has got plans. All right, let me get up and show you the few little things he's done. And it is going to be a secret garden. I know. I know. I told you that I was not, let me step back actually, that I was going to make less gardens or less work and it didn't turn out that way. He went and he got some cement bricks. These are the blocks. So they cost less than $2 a piece. And I told him, you don't really need to put chairs here. We were talking. He was kind of leveling out the soil a little bit. I said, bricks are easier. They're not going to go anywhere and they're sturdy. See, look at that. So there's four bricks there, four there and four there, and that's two benches. And he's got some extras. Let's walk over here. He's gonna have to pick that fruit. Sorry, to get a little sun bleached here. I should get that to my granddaughter. She absolutely loves it. There's another one. Isn't that something? See, some of them didn't make it. We're at the wrong time of the year for it, but that's all right. And then some of the birds got them. And then of course we've been eating dragon fruit and he's so excited with it. He's gonna plant more. Really easy to plant. Let me show you this. I've got to be careful, it's spiking. See this? You would cut it right there and then just stick this up and it would root from there. You don't have to even dry it out or do anything special. Let's try to do this without falling down the hill. So what he's doing is he's not going to terrace it. I told him to put steps in and I'll put a garden down there. Yeah, like I have time to do another garden. But you know, if he did, I would plant something down there. He might do that later on this hillside he does stuff he's oh i know that's his place where he throws things and sifts soil there and so he does do things there that's kind of his special place he did have raspberries those are berry i should water that he's got berries here but the problem is you can't see it from here the canyons there you can this is an avocado tree the wind blows through the canyon and it's constantly drying out that area even though it's there's no wind right now and it's still, but it creates too much dry air. And so the ground gets too dry for a lot of different things, but there's always ways of fixing that. And he couldn't maintain it because he's got his own garden down here. That's his garden. And you know how that is. He made a stairway down there so he can go all the way down. This was all hillside. So he dug it out and he made a stairway and then he goes down there and then the other hiking trail I do, kind of made a hiking trail, I go around there to the other part of the garden where the truck bed is. So it's kind of like you take a, an area, let's say, I don't know, a big area and you kind of cut in different paths. The more paths that you have to go, it makes things look bigger because you kind of zigzagged around. But I do like going down there because back there past the citrus trees over there, is where he's got his beehives, but way down there. And he's got some cages. You can probably see cages down there. He covers trees when he's planting them. And so that's a walking path down there. I've done some nature walks. I haven't done a nature walk for a while. And talk about the different animals, and then I walk that way. Otherwise, the stairs. I actually like doing the path better. But here, let me back up here. He is leveling this out a little bit so you have an area where you can plant and then an area where you can walk. I, I don't know what he's 
actually doing. Do I ask him questions sometimes? But then he changes like me all the time, so there's no use in asking him that much. But he's gonna make it where there's basically a path and an area to walk through so you can plant. That's what he wants to do. This fig tree is staked up here. It's a nice little area to grow a couple little things. We'll see what happens. I think really this would be perfect dragon fruit. That would be the perfect place because by having the dragon fruit here, it's low maintenance. Once you have dragon fr fruit planted, like there's one in there, and then you've got this one, look, it's all kind of old, trim back and you have them in big pots, it would work perfect. Now you can't put it in the ground here. And the reason is we have gophers, but in a pot, they can't kill the plant. If you plant it in the ground, the gophers will come and eat the roots up. It's happened and there's nothing we can do. That's why he made these planters out of the wooden boxes. And the wooden boxes are nice, but again, you have a wooden small raised bed and it draws the moisture out and it takes more watering. That's why I love plastic because the plastic holds in the water better. It can't evaporate through plastic, but it can through wood. So when you have wood, the water is drawn to the wood like a sponge. Keep that in mind. And then it dries on the outside. If you had it lined in metal or plastic, it would not dry out as much. My little songbird up there. So that's why if you're in an area that's too dry, if you've got rain all the time, it won't matter what you're growing in. You can grow in wood, grow bags, whatever you want. But a bucket and totes work the best here because we're in Southern California and we're dry, I'm gonna say 90% of the time. So that's why the wood is not that good. If I'm gonna water it every single day, yeah. Then you can have a wooden raised bed every single day. If I want to water like my totes, sometimes I'd only water them if we have cool weather and we get a little bit of rain once a week. I didn't water, water any of my totes for about a week. They had enough water because they can only evaporate up. So I have to think about how I want to set this up, but a good trimming in here when he's done working in here. And then this has to be trimmed and I've got to make more plants off my original. This is my original purple tree colored. I just thought I'd show you what's going on because I'm trying to figure out too what I want to do. It's just the perfect place to come hide out and sit and enjoy the view. And nobody even knows you're here. Isn't that gorgeous? Nobody knows. There's that squirrel. You probably can't see him. He's way down there and he's going along the chain link and he's gonna go, let me see, hold on. He just ran behind the tree. Those are, that was a tree squirrel, not a ground squirrel. So I thought I'd just show you what's going on, but it has changed a little bit. The stairway here is the same. See, isn't that cool? He's got ideas of building different areas here. He put all this in here. When we got this property years ago, this was all bare. There was nothing here. And he, we had a little bit of this elephant food growing here already. And he started breaking off pieces and he planted it everywhere, just stuck it in the ground. And now we've got a hillside of elephant food. And no elephants. No, let me tell you something. If something ever happened and there was no food, that is full of vitamins and nutrients and vitamin C. Wonderful food. In some countries, they use this for animal feed. None of my animals are gonna eat it, but you know, livestock can eat this. They, they probably treat it by drying it or doing something so they can store it. But here it just grows. Look how wild it grows. I think eventually he wants to get rid of the jade plant. That's the one with the round leaf and that is toxic. So you would never want to eat that. Absolutely toxic, not the same family, a complete different plant. But the elephant food is completely edible. If you kind of like a tangy flavor, you can of course wash the leaves and then add them to salad, stir fries, anything you want to eat. So that's it. So I just want to give you an oversight of what's going on. He did get this and you can see he's making kind of a path. But I, I do think dragon fruit, and I would like to get a couple different other varieties of dragon fruit, would be really cool here. Nice place to come back. You can pollinate your dragon fruit if you need to. And then you can just water it and let it be because it picks up a lot of moisture from the air as well dragon fruit. See, they've got the aerial roots. 
So they pick up a lot from the air in the morning dew and different things. You don't have to water them that much. Perfect plant. And then of course we can trim the big trees back if we need. And I can plant some other stuff. I've got different ideas. This is just nice, a really nice little hidden place. Maybe get some more birdhouses up here and do something here. Anyways, that's kind of a morning update. I'm gonna go get some stuff done and kind of figure out what I am gonna do here. You know, a couple totes back here would work. And if I can get a good path from, let's say, in my bird garden that I can get to, because it got so overgrown, where I can just walk up to the edge and then hit some of these totes, let's say down here, or flower pots or buckets, then I wouldn't have to hike down here. Not that it's a hike. No, but it's just another place to go, but I could do it all at one time. And that's what I'm thinking. And this goes all the way across to the other side and then up that wall, you went, it's on the other side where my rainbow garden is. So that's it. So that's the update on what's going on. I do foresee this changing because he's been coming here moving dirt and I don't know if he'll build a stairway down, but I don't need that. And the other thing I could do, let me step back over here. If I wanted to, I could do a line of totes or buckets so they're sitting on the edge and then you could walk through and have them on both sides. There's a lot of different things you can do. Or I could just plant some more trees and keep it kind of like a secret forest. I mean, after all, I planted fig trees, so maybe some other trees back here. I got some macadamia trees that are coming up where they're not supposed to. Anyways, noise is starting, people are working, and I'm not gonna bore you with that. So I just thought I'd come out and show you this and wish you all a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, that's what I came out here for. I wanna make eggs this morning. And I think I'll use some purple tree collard. I love this stuff. Chopped up in eggs makes a great omelet.